kill each other. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Kino Training Systems. My name is Kino Thomas, and today I would like to cover uh, a test preparation uh, video on the United States Army SIFT test. That is Sierra India Foxtrot Tango, S-I-F-T, if we say it phonetically. Um, now, uh, the United States Army used to administer a test called the AFAST test, but that has been outdated, and now they are transitioning to the SIFT. Um, the SIFT, uh, I think they started uh, administering this test about three years ago in 2013. Uh, don't, ho don't hold me to that, but I'm just kind of guesstimating there. And um, today our question is covering um, a Army Aviation Information uh, test question that will be on the SIFT test. And our question is uh, basically uh, just starting off open-endedly just saying okay a lighted heliport may be identified by and they want you to uh, use option A, B, C, D or E to finish the statement so basically in this case our options are A a flashing yellow light, B a blue lighted square landing area, C white and red lights, D a green, yellow and white rotating beacon and finally E a blue and red, blue and red alternating flashes all right, so what we're going to have to do is I'm going to give you some background information because most people taking this test are not pilots. Um, uh, I am a pilot, and so I know the answer to this question. So basically, in a way, I don't want to call it unfair, but yeah, it is kind of fair. If you have some aeronautical knowledge, aviation knowledge, you are going to have an unfair advantage. And if you watch my videos, like and subscribe, you know, I had to plug myself in then yeah, <laughs> you'll have an unfair advantage when taking this test if you are a Army Aviation Warrant Officer or a commissioned officer that wants to, wishes to fly, you will have an unfair advantage. But, okay, knowledge is power. Anyway, back to our question. So, I'm gonna have to give you a little bit of, I'm going to, I don't have to, I'm going to give you some background information. First off, uh, we have something called a sectional chart. A sectional chart is basically a VFR chart or visual flight rules chart that we as pilots use when we're uh, if you just look down here you're gonna see the continental United States and we could be up in Washington State down to Southern California down to Texas up by the uh, uh, Chicago Detroit area and basically whatever area we're gonna be operating in um, we're basically you're going to see some cross hatches here to represent that let you know that this is the New York sectional so this is the area that we wish to learn about or know about or have the aeronautical information presented to us all right uh, don't fly without a, with an outdated map or sectional chart um, you could see the effective uh, date of the uh, chart here uh, it goes from 28 April 2016 to the 10th of November 2016 so this is what you would actually fly with uh, as a pilot uh, and don't fly with any uh, outdated maps and if you do have outdated maps I would just use them for training purposes only so don't throw them away uh, as a flight instructor there's a wealth of uh, there's a lot of uses you can use but you would cut this section out if you use these things for training purposes to let the student your students or pilots that you are training know that this is an outdated map you will cut this section of it out all right so New York sectional crosshatch let us know that is New York and if we unfold this chart we're gonna come across a legend which kind of gives us uh, an idea of uh, the information that we're looking at on actual sectional chart all right this is a clip from a sectional chart but just to move back, you can read this on your own. You can pause right here if you would like. But basically, you would have uh, depictions of airports. If this is not a hard surface runway like a grass field, you have an open circle. If it's a hard surface runway with lengths of 1,500 foot runways to 8,069 foot runways in length, then you would have the surf. You would have the circle, and you would have the little runway depictions in it. All right. Now. Keep in mind, at airports, 
there are helicopter operations. You would not dense you would not like always see a H. Alright. So at airports helicopters can actually operate there. Alright. The thing with heliports is only helicopters can operate there. So we as fixed wing pilots as rated fixed wing pilots would not be trying to land at a heliport. These are specifically for helicopter operations where a helicopter can come out to the airports and hang out. Alright, so again you can read the stuff on the stuff on your own. All this stuff is self explanatory, but a helicopter or heliport would actually be what we would be interested in as if you are a rotary wing pilot. Alright. Now um just going back to our excerpt that we, we pulled out of here now, like I said, helicopter operations exist all in this area, but we don't necessarily have a heliport. I have an example of what one looks like actually coming up. So you'll see helicopters at Trenton Robbinsville. You'll have helicopters at Trenton Mercer Airport. You'll have helicopters and actually there's actually a helicopter flight school, but you don't see an H there. Um, in addition to that, there are heli there are uh, helipads uh, at the hospitals. You have uh, Mercer, uh, with Mercer Medical Center. You have uh, Helene Fold Hospital. Uh, State Tr State Troopers North Star South Star actually have medevac operations that go there. So I know that for a fact that there are heliports there, but they're not depicted. And this is probably because they don't want every Tom, Dick, and Harry going there. These are emergency facilities, um, but helicopter training exists at Princeton Airport. Uh, so uh, you have Princeton Medical Center, there's a hospital there. Uh, Hamilton Township, Robert Wood Johnson, there's a hospital there. Um, so we don't always see where heliports are. As we fly around, we will see things like this see the H and that indicates that okay you see the pad up top and you see the stairway and this is probably a hospital or some building that has some type of uh, executives probably flying in and out and they get to avoid traffic like uh, they get to avoid traffic unlike us normal people so uh, here's an actual depiction on a sectional chart of a heliport you see a circle with an H in it there is no uh, star on top which would indicate a rotating beacon let's back up a little bit here we go this guy has a rotating beacon this guy has a rotating beacon this guy has a rotating beacon uh, but they don't operate 24 hours a day seven days a week hence the star next to the L and um, we will do another video uh, concerning that even at Trenton Mercer Airport there's a star air which L which means that the lighted airport function does not operate 24 hours a day seven days a week places that do say like in this area Philadelphia International Airport Newark International Airport they would just have an L no star which means lighting is 24 hours a day seven days a week you guys are getting a lot in this video uh, so that's our heliport so all right um, before I get into this let's give you an, an example of what a rotating beacon looks like uh, if you've ever traveled at night uh, at an airport uh oh uh, we lost it we got it back this is what a rotating beacon would look like um, you would see it on and rotating either uh, either at night there's two conditions it's either at night or if the weather conditions are what we call below VFR visual flight rules weather minimum so if you see this thing rotating during the day time then that lets you know that the visibility is bad uh, and it's not conducive for what we call visual flight rules operations so this would be a civilian uh, airport rotating beacon and this thing is actually on roller wheels on the slide so they probably put this thing on an elevator and just uh, elevated to the top of the building and these things could be seen from pretty far distances at night and during the daytime as well so this is a civilian we see a green then a white a green then a white okay so this is basically what we would see all right and I restarted it there green and then a white and you can look at the wall over here and you can actually see it actually emitting uh, the light all right so 
that is our, our rotating beacon that we would see at a civil airport, regular civilian airport. Uh, so this is the example, the actual video example we saw. We saw green and a white, green, white, or white, green, white, green, white, green. But you'll see alternating colors of green and white. If we have a water airport, a sea, a seaplane base, we would see white, yellow, white, yellow, white, yellow. So we're not trying to put planes there. We're not trying to put helicopters there because unless you had like water pontoons or whatever, and I'm not going to get into all that. But a heliport, white green yellow white green yellow or yellow white green yellow white green or green yellow white but they would be in this sequence yellow white green yellow white green all right you would not see yellow then green and white uh it would be yellow white green yellow white green but at any rate these are the colors that you would see and they will alternate in this series or sequence Finally, we have a military airport, a white, white, green, white, white, green, white, white, green. So this brings us back to our question. A lighted airport may be identified by A, a flashing yellow light, we can eliminate that. B, a blue lighted square landing area, we can eliminate that. C, white and red lights, we can eliminate that. We will skip D because that is our answer. We will go to our E selection, which is blue and red alternating flashes. So D is our question, I'm sorry, our, our uh, answer. A lighted heliport may be identified by a green, yellow, and white rotating beacon. This is Keno Thomas with Keno Training Systems. I would like to thank you guys for watching. Uh, please like and hit the subscribe button below. There are more United States Army SIFT questions coming. So if you are taking the test, I am probably one of the very few channels that is going to be disseminating aviation uh, uh, information on this. Uh, this again, this uh, test uh, question was from the Army Aviation Information section. Um, again, one-on-one -on -one tutoring is available. You can email me at k i e n o t h o m a s at gmail dot com, or you can hit me up on Skype, k i e n o dot Thomas. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Train hard. Be safe. Talk to you guys later.